Now, as we start this medical watch story, we want you to know from the outset that you will see images of breast reconstruction. So if that's not for you, now is the time to look away. Yeah, but we do feel these images are important to understanding the medical breakthrough in this story, a story that is very deeply personable, personal to many of you watching tonight. Mike Ferris is going to introduce us to a young scientist who has found a way to grow nipples in a lab for those who have had a mastectomy or other surgery. I cried a lot in the bathroom. Why? I just wanted to be me. I wanted to be a woman. <laughs> And it was for you. I hated looking at myself in the mirror. But I still had hope no matter what. I wasn't giving up. In the mid-90s, Kathy Moore got the most joyous news from her doctor. But it was soon followed by the most devastating news from another. She was expecting her first baby, but just three weeks after her girl came into the world, her doctor called. I was 32 years old. I had no idea. And we walk in there, and he's like, you have breast cancer, and you need to get a mastectomy on both breasts. And I just sat there in shock. What followed was months of fighting for her life. At a time when all new moms are exhausted, Kathy was recovering from a mastectomy and on chemo. I couldn't hold her in the beginning on my own because I was you know, I was cut, and so my mother-in-law would lay her in my arms. This, this, this is emotional. But I just kept pushing through because I knew I had to live, but I didn't know if I would because I knew nothing about cancer. And for 29 years, Kathy has pushed through. There have been multiple breast surgeries and failures with reconstructions of implants, fat, and skin from her abdomen, later from her back, then even later from her buttocks area. There have been skin expanders, more implants, infections, and scar tissue problems. Nipples and areolas have been surgically created and tattooed. Had them tattooed on, 3D, all of that. They were beautiful, but I still wanted that, that texture and feeling. Okay. What Kathy didn't know was one day, this young PhD student in the Center for Stem Cells and Regenerative Medicine at Tulane would end her quest to feel whole again. For the last decade, Dr. Nick Pashos was developing a way to give patients back a real nipple and areola. Medical Watch followed his years of hard work on this innovation, first in 2016. There are 2.8 million breast cancer survivors living in the United States, so this is a huge community, and I think it, you know, it's something that hopefully I can help out at some point. And in 2017, as the scientific community started to take notice. It feels great, and I would love to just see it on one person and help one person, and I think my entire PhD that I've spent it on would be worth it. What Dr. Pashos created is a breakthrough. Just as there are organ donors after death, a real nipple and areola can be harvested as well or taken from mastectomy tissue. He then removes the living cells and DNA and is left with a natural collagen and elastin graft like scaffolding. That can sit on a shelf and be stitched on top of a reconstructed breast no matter how long ago the mastectomy was. Then your own cells, blood vessels, and maybe even in some people, nerves grow through, making it your own. He recognized that the techniques we had for reconstructing them were really insufficient, not adequate enough. Dr. Scott Sullivan is co-founder of the Center for Restorative Breast Surgery and St. Charles Surgical Hospital. They perform 1,300 breast surgeries a year. Women come from all around the world for their expertise and ability to save the patient's natural nipple and areola when other major medical institutions can't. But for patients where that's not possible, there's new hope. Now, Dr. Pashos's intervention, called the NAC graft, has gone from an idea and the lab to one of the very first patients in the country, Kathy. A very simple procedure takes 10 minutes in the clinic, and their body grows into it. So this it looks just like a nipple, and it will become incorporated within about two to three weeks. I thought I was going to go to the hospital. He did this right in the office. It's amazing. It is freaking amazing what he gave me. The nurses were in there. They're like, they're beautiful. They really are. 
Dr. Sullivan is running one of the first clinical trials with the NAC graft. Would you say of all the technology, this is the most natural looking of anything that can be done right uh, it, now? It's the by far, by far and away, this product uh, really creates a very natural, lifelike result. On an emotional level, what do you hear from these women? Oh, they tear up. They can't believe it. You know, the, the, now they're starting to see themselves as they were. Patients will be able to choose grafts that give them the look they want. It's for women and men who've lost that tissue from cancer, failed breast lift or reduction surgery, even for skin reduction after major weight loss. Meeting Nick and his invention changed the course of your life. Yes. Yep, it's been a wild, uh, wild and fun time for the past five years. New Orleanian and Tulane biomedical engineering graduate Billy Heim met Dr. Nick Pashos in the developmental stages. The two opened and now run Bioaesthetics in North Carolina. Their goal is to transform lives with biomaterials and focus on quality of life products like grafts for prolapsed pelvic organs, third degree burns, and pressure ulcers. Years ago, they hoped one day they could help just one patient. Now they have. There were lots of tears about the difference that it's making. 32 years later in her life, how does that make you feel? Unbelievable. Um, you know, it just, it's humbling and, you know, but also just, it, it makes all the hard work and the late nights and the trials and tribulations of the startup life. So it makes all that worth it um, to, know, to know how the impact that it's making. Now at 60, with that baby girl nearing 30, Kathy has the quality of life she's waited three decades for. I pushed through it and I was determined to do any and everything to keep fighting and I won and I'm still winning. Meg Farris, Eyewitness News, Medical Watch. That is just amazing. Dr. Sullivan says the new graft should be available by the end of this year or the beginning of next year.